Well, welcome back to the channel, everybody. We've uh, been out ramming this morning. It's raining Sunday morning. Uh, what is today? The second, maybe? Yeah, second, I think. Sunday. Anyway, yeah, so as you can see, I've got piles and piles of stuff, nappers. I have been to three different nappers trying to get bearings on a Sunday morning. And I got everything I needed. So, uh, anyway, yeah, we're going to go back and work on that old Jeep, that CJ. See if we can't get that hub back together and get some caster shims in it. Hopefully that dandy will stay like a brand new one when we get done. So, yeah, I'll bring you back in when we get home. We're almost there. Only a couple, three miles, yeah, two miles, I guess. Okay, so I thought I'd show you here what I'm working with. Um... The actual complete bearing number with the race and the bearing is a BR35 Napa number. Okay. Now, if you have to buy them individual, that right there is the number for the bearing and the inner race. And this is the number for the outer race. Put them together and you're perfect. As you can see, I'm missing one outer race. But that bearing right there, this race, has no marks in it. You can uh, actually still see with the naked eye a little bit of the machining marks. So that one was replaced either by me or somebody else. I'm not sure. I don't remember back five years what I did. But this one here on the back side definitely was chewed up. So we're going to throw this one out. Actually, I'm going to split it and I'm going to use it to drive. That, I'll put it on like saw with a split in it and use it to drive that in. And that way I don't have to hit in an individual spot, take a chance on damaging that. If you spread your load out, you'll be good. So anyway, I'll bring you back in a little bit. I'm going to go split this and... We'll put some bearings into this and races. Okay, let's see what we can do here. And you got to keep her going even. There we go. She's going down in good. I'm going to get me a piece of flat steel, put on top now that I know that it's going straight, and I'll tap it down in as far as I can. That plate's a little big, but she'll be all right. Still going straight. There, she's flush on top. So now, let's see here how much further I got to go. About an eighth of an inch or so. So we'll put that right back down in. We'll take a punch to it. So locate it. Maybe it's down all the way. That feels like it's there. Come on. Mm, boy, it looks pretty good. I guess it is there. Perfect. Nothing to it. Best thing you can do in the world is just take your old race and split it. And then you can pull it back out. Otherwise, you'll be in a problem. But anyway, yeah, now we'll put the seal in after we get the bearing packed. Well, this here is how these seals came out. And I'm assuming they're right. The lip goes towards the oil 99% of the time. Once in a while, if you got something that you grease, 
manually from the inside then you run them backwards and that way it'll allow the grease to push it out a push out through without pushing the seal out but so to do that one the same way with the seal lip going in it goes that way it looks like it's backwards but it's not um not really a big fan of the way this one is made but it probably fits a hundred different vehicles and uh anyway here's what it is perfect so anyway oh we'll, uh, see if we can just tap that old girl in there Oh, come on. There we go. Smells the kitty's ear all the way around. So, that main bearing in the back is ready. I got the other one all packed. Um... So I did them both at the same time. So I get the outer one right there. Um, <clears throat> this isn't the grease that I used last time, but it's, uh, you know, modern brake stuff. So anyway, we're going to give her a whirl. Go see what we can do. So anyway, we'll put this thing together. I'm going to actually pack um, a little bit of grease in around that seal. And then we'll be back. We'll slide her together. Well, I wanted to explain something to you here real quick before we put this hub on. I've got everything all cleaned up. I got the sleeve area here. I mean, the seal area all cleaned up. But, so this is what the book says. The book says to tighten this nut until there's slight drag on your hub. Back it off an eighth of a turn. Then put your washer on. Once you put the washer on, there's nothing that's going to turn this nut. Okay? That nut's there. But then when you put your other nut up on, this is what you're dealing with right here. That right there, which is at 12 thousandths, is where it's going to be. And when you shove the other nut and washer up against it and tighten it, it goes to 1 thousandths from 12. We'll see how it works. We'll go on up. We'll snug it till we like the feel of it. We'll back it off the eighth. And we'll tighten it up and see what it feels like. But that is why you back it off before you tighten this jam nut. That's what I'm getting at mainly. So I'll bring you back in a little bit. So first things first. Put our bearing on in our hub. Just like so. Now we got to go get our other bearing. Okay, hold that hub right up. Beautiful. Next is a heavy washer. This goes between the bearing and the nut. Line it right up there with the groove. And the nut goes on. Take wipe out this old grease on the knot on the socket, I should say. We don't want none of that dirty stuff in there. Okay, that right there feels just about right. So, bring that right about to here, that hole. That, that's a sixteenth right there. Or an eighth, I mean. So, now we'll put our next locking device in. It tucks right underneath, that lip tucks underneath the uh, last knot. 
just like so. And this knot here ought to wipe off a little bit. There we go. And this one here we tighten up. We're just going to burr or something on it. But, oh, there we go. So now let's tighten this. Now, right now, that half a turn or a quarter of a turn that we just took. drag on it. I would say there's more slop in the uh, I think that's going to be good though. It's probably pound and a half pressure takes to turn that. I think she's going to be good. And the book says you're supposed to turn that washer and bend it up over one of the flats. I usually don't. Um, as long as that dandy is tight, like I just pounded it, never had one loosen up. Yeah, that feels good. So anyway, the rest of it is just a matter of putting stuff together. Make sure there's no dust on that. I usually run these dry. I usually don't put a gasket or a sealer on them. Never had a problem getting water into them. Come on. There we go. Tighten that up. There's a snap ring that goes on next. Which I guess I'll put it on because that's the only thing that's really a mystery um, that somebody could frig out. This goes on the groove of that axle. There we go. Yep, snapped in. I just heard it. Beautiful. Put all of our. Uh, Bolts back in. So, you want to have them pretty tight too, because that's what drives your, your hub, you know. All drives through this mechanism. And then this little dandy. Let's see now, it goes just like so. There we go. And then take your Allen wrench and tighten up these. And that's all there is to it on that hub. So I'm going to do that off camera, and when I bring you back, we'll be getting ready to put some uh, shims in the spring, between the spring and the axle housing. We'll uh, do that for the caster. This here is the front of the spring. It's got the narrow bushing. This wider bushing goes to the back. If you've got to put more caster in, you've got to put the wedge towards the front. And this one is a little wider. I actually got to go make sure that that's not going to bother. I'll be back in a minute. This is a two inch. These are inch and three quarters. 
So, uh, yeah, I got an eighth on each side. I want to put it up against the uh, bracket on the bottom. Make sure it's not going to be a problem. Oh, wrong piece here. I need that piece. Let's go take a look. I've, uh, this thing had a lot of rust on it, so I sandblasted it and put some cold galvanizing on it. Yeah, that is going to be a problem. So I got to put these in the milling machine. I'm not going to film it, but I'm just going to mill this edge down on both sides an eighth of an inch and we'll be good to go. There we go. So now we'll raise this old girl up. Right there. Perfect. So, got it set at zero. We'll walk it off to the side, take a few thousandths. Or go up an eighth of an inch. There's a hundred. Twenty-five. Right there. This is a brand new carbide, so shouldn't be any uh Move that away there because I don't know how fast it's flipped. Slow this down a little bit. There we go. Hopefully, we won't uh, walk those wedges apart. I got them tight, so. Oh, don't that cut nice. Maddie gave me that Carol son there. He gave me a couple of new carbides and I have been hoarding them, not wanting to use them, but this is brand new steel, so. We'll back it back across and make the cuts go in the same direction. And then it'll throw the chips to the back. Beautiful. Wow, that new cutter cut nice. I'm gonna have to get me a uh, short parallel to go on the bottom. There, now we'll take a an eighth off the other side. This, uh, brush the chips out of everywhere. Got a little guy across the bottom. Tight, I'm not good and tight. So, theoretically, I think those are eighth inch. I know they are, so I should just be able to go right across it. Yeah, I don't know why we can't. Right there, I should do it. Nothing like having good tooling, I'll tell ya. Kind of mess we got now.
That well, looks good. I'll be right back. Yeah. Looks good to me. So that should be inch and three quarters right on the money. So anyway, I got to go change batteries in this damn GoPro. And we will assemble it on this spring bundle. So be back in a minute. Well, we'll tighten this up. I'm actually going to go get a uh, torque wrench. I'll have an idea there. I'm going to put this up about 28 pounds. And I'll be back in a few minutes here. We'll talk this down. Make sure everything stays in alignment real good. Well, we're just about there. If you got one of these angle screwdrivers, it works a lot better to hold it. Oh, right there. We're there. So. Thought I had a little more to go, but I guess I didn't. I didn't want you to have to watch me ratchet that up. So anyway, we will uh, go get the whiz wheel. Well, actually, I can just do it with a hacksaw probably just as quick. We'll uh, cut that right off right there. Beautiful. That's what you should look like when you're done. Make darn sure that the thick part of that wedge is towards the front of your spring pack. Or you will put in the wrong way on your caster and it will not handle good at all so yeah we're gonna go bolt this back on the machine set the front end down on this platform here uh, something else I'll go get the other one here real quick and I'll show you something else that I've seen people do wrong so I've seen in a few cases where people try to just set this on the top and they actually have bored this center out to go over the top of the bolt but then you don't have enough of the bolt sticking up to catch your actual front end in the alignment hole so these are meant to be actually bolted on you know go get your center bolt do it right you'll be glad you did um So as you can see, the wedge is pulled down. I'm not going to try to torque it because we're actually wrapping the springs as if you was accelerating hard. So we're just going to leave it like this right now. Leave everything kind of loose. And after I get the wedge in the other side, then we'll go ahead and really tighten stuff up. And that should be about it. And then we can hook the shocks on when we're done. So... I'm not going to show the other side, it's more of the same, but I'm going to go to the other side and when we get ready to finish her up, I'll bring you back. Well, we got the other wedge in, came out good. I don't have those U-bolts uh, tight yet. I'm sure they go up around 55 pounds or so, maybe 65. I got to go up and read and see if they actually give us back, if not, I'll probably go 55 or 60 and see what they feel like. Um, I'll do that in the morning though. And that's all I gotta do. I gotta put this shock back on in the morning. The other side's all on. Torque the four nuts on either side and put the hubs and tires back on. Give her a test drive. And I can tell by looking at it, it's got quite a bit of caster now. So probably got six degrees maybe. So, we'll see what happens. I'll, uh, I'm going to call it quits on this video today. It's much as a half hour long. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, take care, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one. Don't hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe. Talk to you later.